Saying three is not a visual cue. Just <laughs> so you know. I had the two. Ah, you, yeah, you did. You, you <laughs> yes. got. You caught on. And we are back with uh, our next technical segment for the show, Traps of Gold, by Andrew Wilson and Michael Brooks. Uh, Andrew is here with us tonight. Andrew specializes in application security assessment, penetration testing, threat modeling, and secure development lifecycle. Andrew is the active is active as a leader of the Phoenix OWASP and is a Microsoft MVP in Windows Azure. And he likes to beat people up in B-sides presentations. <laughs> likes to beat people. And I heard he was in the tub at the Trustway Spider Labs party. Is that true? That tub was. Oh, that Were was- you there? Were you there, Andrew? Mm-hmm. I was not. That would be a lie. Oh, okay. Well, the tub was fabulous. So welcome to the show. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Uh, just very quickly, for those who were at the party or maybe at DEF CON, um, I've got this article from, uh, if we can cut over to my, my camera here, just kind of a little fun before we get started, Andrew. I've got a copy of Modern Drunkard Magazine. I don't know if you guys can see this. This is Jack what? Daniel. Modern yeah. Drunkard Man- Magazine? Yes, Larry. Your, your subscription is in the mail. I subscribed to you. Because okay. I'm, I'm that kind of friend. And <laughs> there's an article in here that says, you know you're a drunkard when... Which I'll read random quotes through um, about uh, throughout the show. One of the ones that Jack and I particularly are fond of, of... You know you're a drunkard when... Apologizing for last night would be like Oswald offering to pay for Jackie's dry cleaning. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. All right. We can, we can look forward to or not more from You Know You're a Drunkard When. Okay, children, that's your history lesson uh, yeah. for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> See, we do teach Pete the youth of America. Jack's yeah. history. There's a whole lot of... All right. Andrew, yeah. sorry. So tell us about <laughs> Traps of Gold. <laughs> Welcome to Paul.com. Yes. Right. So, the, uh, so the idea of the talk actually came from a short story that we were reading. It's about this uh, miner who uh, goes out into the desert. He finds this, like, this vein of gold. And as he starts uh, to, to mine it, it's obviously really precarious, right? Like if he does something wrong, it's going to crush him. But as time goes on and he's getting a lot of you know, gold out of it, he becomes less and less careful to the point where this thing basically crashes on top of him and he almost dies from it right and that kind of is this idea of building basically embedded honeypots inside of web applications where if somebody's attacking you and they're testing your application and they think they're getting what they want out of it uh, we want to use that against them as a means uh, of protecting our web applications uh, ranging from a variety of things right like uh, I know John Strand talks a lot about the uh, attack uh, attribution and annoyance right so it that's the same premise of the Traps of Gold talk. So now, are you doing things like building building in something that presents a specific vulnerability, like cross-site scripting, for example, but it's not really cross-site scripting, but the attackers think it's cross-site scripting? Uh, yes, but cross-site scripting is actually really difficult to emulate. Uh, we focused around like SQL injection type vulnerabilities. Okay. And so we had a couple of ones where we could do like blind SQL injection. So most of the, the tools and approaches that you would use would be, you know, either trying to get like a numeric flaw where you could do like one plus one is two and get two results, or you do uh, something with like timing. So you yep. do timing based attacks. So, and you so can we you send emulate- the, like you send the sleep command in the SQL injection, and then if it takes 30 seconds to come back, it's it's vulnerable right yeah so we just emulated all that so we you send us sleep and that's exactly what we did with your request for a period of time and so uh, you're interesting you're kind of getting out of it exactly what you've asked from this right uh, or like or like with a directory traversal type attack we'd actually return to you fake files or if you asked for certain things we'd say here you go you can you know you can have it right mm-hmm. but the value in that's diminished because we you know it's lying right I like it I like it so now, were there, did you produce any tools or examples of where how you can um, implement this? Yeah, so we actually showed a couple of different things. Uh, we started off with kind of going over some vulnerabilities we found inside of um, IE and uh, PHP IDS. Uh, but then as far as demonstrating some of the core concepts, one of the things we did was uh, you could trigger literally every false positive or every every tack vector for NIC2, for instance. Mm-hmm. So created a tool then a module so everything that Nick2 asked for we told it we had um, and it returned 5,400 something results back to the to the application that's pretty awesome no. about that Andrew it's if you actually put that on a server I could just see some pen testing companies actually writing up every single one of those vulnerabilities in the report <laughs> <laughs> well I mean it, it, it's kind of uh, if I were to see that as a pen tester I 
I would think that there's something wrong. But then again, John Strain and I worked on a lot of the research together for offensive countermeasures. So now when we do pen tests, we're kind of like, oh, I wonder if they're running this. <laughs> so is there anything that you're doing, Andrew, to, to kind of help it? And the way I describe it to people is kind of like the movie Inception. Like, how much of a dream world do you want to build for the person and how realistic do you want to make it? Like, what were some of your tactics to make it believable for the attacker? Right. So that's actually not that's actually not a believable attack, right? We call that, like, blatant noise, right? We just create yeah, noise yeah. to the point where it becomes a problem. Where we think some of these things might actually be extrapolated to, like, how do you trick a person, right? Um, going back to SQL injection, why couldn't I create, like, a, a fake form field that if you start testing it for SQL injection, it works, right? And it works all the way to the point of a fake virtual machine that's running SQL Server behind it that completely shims you off while you're doing this for the purpose of developing some sort of case or creating evidence or even attribution at some point uh, down the road, right? Um, why, why can't I do something like that? It, it is the vulnerability, right? So if you're testing it, it's not, I'm not faking anything. It's just not legitimate in the sense that you're not getting any real production data out of it. So you actually create a, a virtual machine on the, on the back end? Yeah, you, you, so you can definitely do that, right? So mm -hmm. if you have a virtual machine that's sitting in isolation and you just pop the request all the way to that off of this, this one form field, you could actually probably put that inside of a, a framework and completely move people into that. Mm, I like that idea of moving them outside of your real application and leading them into something somewhat more tempting, but in a trap where you're now, how are you actually do, are you doing much of the attribution to figure out who they are or fingerprint their tools? Uh, so that's actually interesting. The second part of our talk, the second demo that we showed, actually the last one we showed, was more of like uh, how far can you kind of go with this, right? Mm. And one of the things we did was we uh, we actually popped a shell uh, through somebody scanning us while they were scanning us with Akinetics because Akinetics and a lot of the commercial scanners, this isn't like an Akinetics problem, this is a commercial scanner, like a good scanner problem, is that anytime you want to render dynamic data, you oftentimes have to either A, leverage the browser that's included on the machine, or you have to embed a browser into it right. uh, so that way it can render the data. But the problem is that yet that tool now is vulnerable to every browser hack mm -hmm. that that browser engine is ca capable of being attacked by up to the version in which it was deployed, or if it's using the one on the system, whatever you've patched the system for. And so in our case, we just use Metasploit. We loaded up uh, an attack against uh, one of the ActiveX controls, and then when Akinetics went in to go look at the page, it actually pops the shell off the scanning device. And so th that would be a way where you could take it like all the way to the end where now I'm on the box. Um, but we didn't really play so much inside of attribution. We kind of took it all the way to attacking back. We didn't do any of the denial of service stuff kind of with the first phase, but we definitely talked about doing things like uh, reversing slow, slow Loris, right? So why can't I respond back as slow as I want to if I know that you're up to no good? And so like with scanning tools, oftentimes like it'll just completely make them go crazy if you start doing timeouts or you start making them go slow. Um, and another, another one that worked out really well was uh, status codes actually. Status codes wouldn't, wouldn't be like denial of service, but oftentimes when developers are building tools or frameworks for testing this stuff, they do like, they check the status code of the response and then they make a decision based on it. Oftentimes when they see a 404, it's like, hey, it's kind of like a null reference. I didn't get a response back. Um, but why can't I return the actual content and tell you it's a 404 at the same time? Your browser doesn't care at all. Um, and so if you have like sensitive parts of a site that you don't want to be enumerated through spiders, you can actually do this and oftentimes it completely makes them go away. So the browser doesn't care. I never thought of it this way and I think it's an excellent point. If I build a website and like I use mod security to just swap out the status code when it returns back to the browser, the browser doesn't care whether it's a 202 or 404, it renders the page just fine. Absolutely, yeah. Because it, when it gets a 404, what is it going to render? It's going to render the, the 404 not there. found content. Right, That's right. right. So as, as long as I include the HTML inside of it, the browser will look at the page. It makes no difference at all. It could be the le total legitimate con uh, content. The only one exception is that, like, if your content is below a certain size in, like, Internet Explorer, you get the, uh, it's like a friendly exception message. Yep. Uh, and that becomes problems for, like, CSS or graphics. But as long as they're over a particular size, you're, you're fine and you get no negative effects in modern browsers. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. I like, I, John, what do you, do you have any more questions along those lines? I know that really well, trickles into thing, what we're doing. The big thing that I, um, I'd like to know, I just had a couple people instead of messaging me. Um, Andrew, uh, do you have the code available someplace where people can download it? 
So that's actually kind of funny you ask. Uh, what originally the intent was, kind of similar to what uh, uh, Rob was just talking about, is this, this talk turned out to be a, basically a technical nightmare. Um, during the talk, my computer crashed three times in the middle of the talk. And then we had actually created a live site that we were going to make available for people to test and play around with and get to kind of feel. Um, that did not also get launched either. But uh, when we get this to the point where I have a solid solution, we'll probably put up the live site, make an announcement, and let people test it. And then after the live site has been tested and verified, we'll, we'll be releasing source code for it. So hey, it's, it's on the way. The OCM VM. If you want me to shoot you the OCM VM, you can drop it on that, and we can distribute it through that if you'd like. Okay, yeah, let's talk about that. I definitely want to cool. distribute what we've got so far. Um, we've made modifications to PHP IDS, like especially around the stuff with the blind SQL injection and the path traversal identification. So if you go into even just the DEF CON CD, uh, the source code that we made as modifications to PHP IDS are there as well. So some of it's already there on the CD, and but the majority of it's not. So a lot of the protections you've built into PHP IDS? Yeah, so... You know, when you're talking about this process of attacking stuff, you definitely, it's not about reinventing the wheel, right? So we were using PHP IDS as our means to identify when an attack is actually happening against the system, so that way we could manipulate the result set back out to it, right? So PHP IDS, we modified a, a whole bunch to become not just reactive in like, oh, hey, this is happening, but more like, oh, hey, this is happening, and here's how I want you to lie to them kind of thing. Awesome. Uh, so PHP IDS can change the status code? Uh, no, so that one wasn't in PHP IDS. We actually wrote that as an HTTP module that you could put in front of any IIS-based uh, web host. I gotcha. Yeah, Ryan was on the show. Yep. Yeah, we've been talking about Ryan, putting some of this into mod security and uh, p potentially putting a release out of that. He just did a release recently, kind of as a first phase of this, talking about trip wiring, where you can either create and inject fake form fields and uses that as means to identify when somebody's tampering with the site, which then kind of couples into this more proactive or offensive countermeasure approach. Mm. Very cool. Uh, was there anything else you covered in your presentation you wanted to tell people about? I think it's great that it's being built into the tools that exist. I really want to get this, you know, it's the message that we, we've been talking about for a while with offensive countermeasures. I think it's something for defenders to kind of latch onto and really make a difference and help defend things. Um, so, uh, kind of going back to that, you know, obviously John has talked a lot about this, and he, he's kind of focused around this idea of annoyance, uh, attribution, then attack. We we kind of use as the heart of our premise slightly different lines, but ironically through through the same guy, uh, the Marine Corps maneuverability framework mm -hmm. or m maneuverability strategy. So John Boyd, the guy who came up with OODA, also happened to be like one of the primary influencers for Marine Corps strategy for how you would attack people kind of deal, and so. The way that we were trying to put this together was more about like how do you strategically do this in a fashion where you you get this full advantage out of it so you can take advantage of, or, or you can do it at the point whatever whether it's attribution or attack or, or shut them out of your network depending on how you choose to handle it um, and so the Marine Corps maneuverability stuff was kind of a big part of it as well um, specifically talking around their their concepts which are you know deception ambiguity and uh, tempo pacing outpacing a person. Mm -hmm. So, Very neat. Um, yeah, and, and you know, one of the final things, because I know that I'm going to get hate mail tomorrow. Um, <laughs> do people complain about Andrew being on the show, and I'll get all kinds of crap where people are like, people shouldn't waste their time on this because they should try securing their web applications first. And I, I think, Andrew, you'd agree with me. We, we're not saying do this instead of securing your stuff. We're saying secure your stuff and then put this in. This is more like a maturity model that you can implement to try to make your defense, uh, make your uh, make your systems a much harder target, correct? Yeah, so, uh, you know, obviously our approach to security at this point is not is not bad, right? We have patch management, we have SDLC. I'm a huge fan. Um, you kind of mentioned before that I'm a Microsoft MVP. I studied a whole bunch about their secure development lifecycle, and I think I think that is the way that we should be writing software, at least to some degree. How, how much of the SDLC, or at least Microsoft's version of it, you buy into is, is obviously going to be organization specific. But you know, even when we look at these things and how great they are, we still have we still have Patch Tuesday at the at the end of the day, right? So how do we take it from a mature model where you're doing the right stuff, where you're refining your code so it is 
less less bugs inside of it and turn that into a way where now you have more of a strategic advantage to attack it right like if you have sql injection in the front page of your site you know i don't recommend trying to worry about offensive countermeasures and, mm-hmm. and attacking people back like you should deal with the, the problems that you have first um, but if you think that reducing your bugs and, and patch management is going to be a winning s- solution I, I think that we've probably got enough historical evidence at this point that says I, I don't think they're the path to, to security I, I don't think they're the end goal there's also the fact that we all have um, I've heard rumors that most of us uh, inherit legacy code that we can't uh, clean up uh, overnight when we walk into a job. So it's true. That's a good point, Jack. No, it's an excellent use case for this technology. Andrew, uh, thank you very much for coming on the show. We look forward to uh, you releasing your tools, and you know we're happy to announce them here on the show. I really, of course, you know John and myself, and, and a lot of us here on, on Paul.com are really kind of get behind this idea of um, setting traps and offensive countermeasures. So it was, it's really good to see people uh, doing research in this area and presenting on it. So thank you very much. Thank you.